Dems this week became the latest party to break a promise to voters. They'd pledged they'd scrap tuition fees. They're now party to them actually going up. The coalition blames the difficult economic climate for tough choices. Recent Labour governments have hardly been exempt from saying one thing and doing another. But has something fundamental changed about the nature of our politics? Are today's politicians less honest? It's easy to get misty-eyed about the Parliament of yesterday as being a place where honourable members fought political battles with integrity and honesty. If they erred or lost the public trust, they apologised and resigned. In 1957, Prime Minister Anthony Eden resigned after ordering the disastrous invasion of the Suez Canal. But resignations from office on a matter of principle are an increasingly rare thing. It's hardly Suez, but this week there were calls for the resignation of the Deputy Prime Minister over tuition fees. In the election campaign, the Lib Dems pledged to abolish fees. Now in government, they say they'll put them up. My own party consistently opposed graduate contributions, but in this current economic climate, we accept, we accept that the policy is simply no longer feasible. But from child benefit to nuclear energy and Iraq, politicians from all sides have found it difficult to keep their word. I intend to Seven years ago, the Foreign life. Secretary quit Robert government days before the Iraq invasion. Now. It is for that reason, and that reason alone, and with a heavy heart, that I have resigned from the government. Yeah. On Wednesday, the Prime Minister was mocked for breaking a pledge on child benefit made while he was in opposition. I wouldn't change child benefit. I wouldn't means test it. I don't think that's a good idea. I agree with the Prime Minister. Why doesn't he? <laughs> Public trust in our MPs reached a new low last year after details of their expense claims were revealed. But MPs say they've been unfairly portrayed as money grabbers. History suggests there never was a golden age of political integrity. We've always needed politicians and always satirised their weaknesses and vices. So are today's politicians really less honest than their predecessors? Well, what do you think? If you've got a webcam, go to our website now and click on the video call link to join the discussion. You can make your point by phone to us this morning. You can text us, email us or contact us online. The details are on screen now. Um, John, <laughs> politicians have always been economical with the verite, haven't they? Are they not any worse? Yeah, they have. I, th I think they are worse nowadays. I mean, I think there's a massive sort of disconnect between uh, mainstream politicians and the uh, British electorate and the expenses scandal, as you say in your film, uh, didn't help. I mean, Europe's a great example of this. You know, uh, Blair, Cameron, uh, David Cameron gave a cast iron uh, guarantee there'd be a vote on Europe. Uh, Brown did the same. Blair did the same, and the British public still haven't had it. And this week, of course, the EU budget was voted through. We had no choice of it. It's gone up. You know, I'm part of this uh, EU referendum campaign. And it's, no, but listen to this. It's not party political. Because what we're saying is, let the people decide. And that's just one issue. Yeah. And there's loads of issues. You like want that. politicians to be held to their word well, and never change their no, mind. No, sometimes they will have to change. It's a bit like what's happening in America with the Tea Party. You know, that where ordinary people now are saying, and campaign groups all coming together saying, you must listen to the people. It could be on gay rights, it could be on uh, morality, it could be on any subject. But there's a disconnect between these people who are in Parliament and the people who are in Brussels uh, from ordinary people. They do not but listen that's to... A different, that's a different issue, isn't no, it? Saying you must listen to popular opinion. No. You, We're but, talking about our politicians honest. Well, yes, because they say one thing when they're in opposition. Nick Clegg could say whatever he wanted because he thought he was never ever going to get elected. He must have one hell of a hangover at the moment because he had to change on the education. And the point about this is they're not being honest with us on these subjects. Well, Reverend Rose said, Hudson Wilkin, you are the chaplain for the Speaker of the House of Commons. You must meet politicians all the time. Are they allowed to change their minds or are they automatically to be called liars? I, I think politicians ought to be able to change their minds, but I, I just want to say I've only just started in that particular post. <laughs> I do want to say, however, that I know decent politicians. Mm -hmm. I have a, a fantastic mm -hmm. MP. 
Um, and I am sure, and I believe, I look for the good in people, I really do. And I believe from the people who I have met so far, and from my own, my own member of parliament, that people actually entered into politics with a good heart and, and a real sense of, we want to change this, we want to make a difference. But having said that, for me, the great big difference is that today, something that we have today, which we didn't have way back mm. then, is the 24-hour media. The 24-hour media that the politician says something, yeah. and before they've even had time to go away and dissect it and do whatever sure. they need to do it, the media is on top of them. And, you know, but, it, it's, it's but, there. But Rose, well, so it's I, not I just think the that media. that is a factor. I think that is a big is. factor. I would take that on board, but also I would say to you, Rose, it's because what we have now is professional politicians. They go to Oxford or Cambridge or university, they come out, they become political researchers, they go straight into Parliament, they get a safe seat. Not and, all and of them. A lot, most of yeah. them nowadays. Okay. And the the way the party machines work, we don't have mavericks anymore in Parliament because you wouldn't get the seat in the first place. Well, you let's ask Peter. Um, and Peter I think that's Tatchell, what's missing in British politics. You've been involved in politics. You've stood for political office. Have you ever felt that you've needed to lie about things in order to achieve that? There's certainly pressures, but I've refused to. Mm. And perhaps that's been to my disadvantage. I think in the party political system, there is a great pressure to conform yeah. to your party's interest and to support your party leader. Do you think it's impossible to be honest? Um, no, but I think, I think it is very difficult. And I, I don't think it is a recent phenomenon. It goes way back. I remember in 1979 general election, Margaret Thatcher promised not to increase prescription charges, but when she came to office, she increased them not 100%, but eventually 500%. Um, so, you know, it isn't, it isn't new. David. But, I, but I think we need to ask ourselves about our political system and try and find ways of ameliorating it so that there is greater uh, role for individual conscience but, of MPs. Reverend but, Rose, you mentioned a, a media culture yes. that twists and yes. takes things out of context. David Craig is author of Squandered and Fleeced. <laughs> Are you part of a media culture that doesn't allow politicians to speak and act freely? I'm sorry, I first came into contact with politicians only about two or three years ago when I started writing books about how Britain is managed or mm -hmm. rather mismanaged. What shocked me, I spent time at Westminster and in Brussels, was the arrogance, the greed, the selfishness and the cynicism of everybody I met. The utter contempt that these people held, the ordinary voters who uh, pay their expenses and their generous salaries and expenses. If I can just give one very brief example. Uh, just before the expenses scandal broke, uh, all the politicians and leaders were trooping up on television saying they're going to be honest and open and transparent. But there was a little-known bill going through the House of Commons to keep MPs' expenses secret. Of 646 MPs, less than 20 voted against it. So over 630 were in favour of keeping their expenses secret. Okay. My impression is we no longer have conviction politicians like a Foot, a Callaghan or a Thatcher. We have people who are only in it for themselves. It's no public service. It's just self-service now. Let's so ask, let's ask an MP anything. that they exact do. question. Philip Davis is uh, the Conservative MP for Shipley. Are you a conviction politician or in it for yourself, Mr Davis? Well, I, I would like to think that my record shows that I'm a conviction politician. I, I made it abundantly clear in my maiden speech in Parliament that I would never accept a promotion. I didn't want to a government job. If I was ever offered one, I would turn it down, and that I would speak out and uh, on things. If my party was doing the right thing, I would say so. If I thought they were doing the wrong thing, I'd say so. And I think anybody who's looked over my uh, record over the last five years would uh, would conclude that I've stuck to that pretty well. John. There was clearly a canteen culture within Westminster, you know, because all of them, well, most of them were implicated in the expense scandal. They seem to think it's gone away. It hasn't. It's got worse because people now do think, and it's bad for democracy, this, that all politicians are corrupt, all politicians are liars. And as Rose says, they, they are not all like that. She is correct. However, there was a canteen culture. You can get this expense. You can get flip your houses. You, you know, um, what's his name? The one who looks like a, a Muppet at the moment, uh, Chief Secretary to the Treasury. 
uh, Danny Alexander. I mean, he it's talks an about... unfair description well, of him, isn't it? I think he looks like that Muppet uh, with a ginger hair. But anyway, let's, let's leave that to one it's side. personal he, he talked, attacks, Okay, it. but he talked about benefit uh, scroungers, and he talked about benefit sheets and, and, uh, and uh, tax avoiders, and uh, he was saying that they're as bad as benefit sheets. This is a man who flipped his own mortgage on his second home. They were all at it, playing the game. Yeah, but and this, there is the, now a disconnect, Susanna, and, and they need to reconnect. And one of the ways they could do there is an, there is an argument that people will say, well, there's one thing yep. doing things within the rules. There's quite yes. another if you are dishonest but, or lying about What I would things. like to see is referendum on things like, you know, the way we're now getting mayors. I think Ken did quite a good job in London. Boris is doing quite a good job. We've got a mayor in Doncaster. Why don't we have more referendum for these mayors? And the same with the Europe question. Let the people okay. get could, more could, involved could in the process. Practical yeah. proposal. Yeah, absolutely, Peter. I would like to see a law which said that politicians who are proven to have knowingly lied or misled mm. would be barred from office. Yeah. But is knowingly lying or misleading the same as promising something in an election campaign yeah. and finding that when you're in government, it is economically impossible to fulfill that, that promise? That, for me, is a big issue. Mm. I think when you're in opposition or when you're not actually doing the task, you, 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 you say, oh, we could do this, we could do that, we could do the other, and we make pronouncements about these things. And then we are in government, and we suddenly realize that there is a big difference between what is reality mm -hmm. and what you thought you could do and could offer. And that's more a challenge. And so I don't think that we, we should necessarily accuse them of lying deliberately. But what, what about my proposal for, for an, uh, to, to make it a, a disbarring offense? For politicians to knowingly lie, wouldn't you agree that that, but it that depends that, on that, what you call knowingly lie? Because the prime minister saying we, we will not um, change child uh, benefits, benefits and then comes into power and realizes that he has to do something about it. Yeah, Chain Greer it, is no. executive editor of Total Politics and joins us on his webcam now. Um, Shane, are we being unfair? I think to a degree. I mean, the expenses scandal, in a, in a funny way, actually points to this whole issue of honesty in politics today. Are politicians more honest or less honest than they were previously? I think they're probably about the same. The difference, though, is that it's a lot easier for us, whether it's the media or whether it's people at home, to actually catch them out when they are being dishonest, whether it's an outright lie or whether it's sort of fudging the statistics slightly. There's an army of people out there on the blogosphere, in the media and so on, who are able to keep on top of the kind of facts and figures and day-to-day -day politics that ensures when a politician comes out and says something, if it isn't right, if it isn't accurate, they can be held to it. I think we've seen a big change in that regard. And as we move forward, if politicians are dishonest, it's going to be increasingly difficult for them to be dishonest and not to be found out. And that's an important thing. George from Glasgow says, I do not believe any politician is completely honest. Just look at the expenses scandal. Kevin from Manchester says, try and get a politician to give a yes or a no answer. And Aitken from Cheshire says, politicians' promises have a very accurate shelf life. They expire at 10 o'clock on election night. Yes, yes, OK, Peter, you want to... I was going to say that, you know, um, quite clearly, if we want to have a healthy democracy, we do have to have confidence that politicians are telling the truth. Yeah. And we do have to find a way of weeding out those who at least persistently mislead and lie, because that is not only just morally wrong, it's bad for democracy and undermines people's confidence. But we also have to have a responsible media. And, and the, the media must take some responsibility. Oh, come on, Rose. It's not always the media's fault. <laughs> well, you can continue that debate on our website.